Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJerryBench.com. Today we're going to do an upgrade, the firmware upgrade on the Epax X1 printer. I just want to go over covering it, downloading it, expanding it to your SD card or your USB stick and getting it ready for updates. So let's get started. I'm going to go download the files now. So the first thing you have to do is open up your web browser, head over to epics3d.com, which is Epax's website. And we're gonna go over to the support menu and then down to firmware con configs. What we need to do is look for the uh, firmware for this printer, which is an X1. And here's the firmware file right here. We're gonna download that into our downloads directory. And once that's done, we can head on over to the downloads directory and extract it. Open up your file browser or file explorer and then locate your download directory. Open up the uh, or extract the firmware update. And then what we want to do is take all the files off of our original USB stick that came with our printer and, uh, and wipe that out. Here you can see the PDF document for uh, which tells you the instructions for updating the firmware. So you could just read these. I printed these out so I could have it handy for when I was doing the upgrade. So again, like I said, you have to wipe everything off your USB card. All you want on that USB stick is just the files for the two updated firmware versions, which is the update LCD and the bin file. Those are the only two things we need on that. So what I'm going to do here is just create a directory where I can copy all the files that are currently on my USB stick right here. And I'm going to copy those over into the backup folder. It's the same with either a Mac or a PC. I'm just using a Mac here. And once those files are copied over, then you can go ahead and uh, erase everything on the USB stick. You don't necessarily have to format it. Just take the files and just put them in the delete folder or trash them, send them to the trash. So I'm just gonna wait for all these files to copy over and then we'll just go ahead and pull up our folder for the USB stick, which is the next part we're going to have to do because once I collect, select one folder, obviously it hides the other one. So I'm going to make this one a little smaller and we'll pull up the USB folder right here. Grab the two folders, the bin file and the LCD update file, and then copy them over to your USB stick. And let's get ready to go and install these. Okay guys, I've downloaded the files as you saw, so what we're going to do now is we're going to prepare this to um, do the firmware update. I've got my handy download sheet. You can print this out, follow it along. It's pretty simple to do. Um, these printers with the sheet tube box boards, uh, they, they pretty much do upgrades all the same. So it was the same for my Elegoo Mars the last time I did the firmware update on this. It's the same for the Epax. There are two files that you put on your memory stick. It's the LCD update and then the bin file update. Put those on there, put that in your printer. Once it's in your printer, turn your printer on. The first thing we want to do is make sure there's no other files on your USB stick, which we already covered. We're going to go ahead and we're going to select print. We're going to find the LCD update somewhere on here. Update LCD, hit start. going to reboot. Okay, so without rebooting your printer, without turning it off, we're going to go ahead and do the update. So that's the FPG 27101. Uh, FPG A23 P29104. We're going to hit print. Printing done, we'll hit confirm, back to our screen. Now with that done, now what we're going to do is we are going to follow the instructions. We're going to power off the screen for a few seconds. We're going to power off the whole printer. Turn that off for a few seconds. Let it sit for a minute. And then we should be able to turn it back on and just verify that our firmware is up to date. Let's turn it back on. We're 
going to go into system information and we should be on the latest version 23.1 we are on the latest version of firmware so once that's all done go ahead turn that uh, you can go back and now I would suggest doing the following and I'm going to do that now I'm going to go ahead and reprint a model and we're going to see if it made any difference with the models that we printed in the past so let's go ahead and get started on that okay guys so I spent about an hour and a half and did these two little prints you can see I did a knotted torus and a hollow cube and what I wanted to find out here was how well the printer uh, printed these files after the firmware update. I'm not sure how much of a difference it made however I did notice that on the Taurus there's a much more detail. I'm using Ceratec white resin here and I'm very, very unhappy with this resin it really prints poorly no matter which printer I use. And my layer height here I did at 0 0.05 I did six second exposure on this resin probably should have done eight so that I wouldn't have gotten the holes but you can see that I do have some layer lines and again I think it's mostly the resin because I don't get this on any other resin that I use so I'm just gonna measure up this cube I printed this cube at 20 millimeters so I want to see if I had any problems or shrinkage when the when the printer printed this and you can see I'm just about over 20 millimeters there and let's just check the other side we are just over 20 now this is before curing so this is what they printed out like just before curing I'm gonna go throw these in the cure uh, machine and see how well they come out and we'll remeasure these and see if I had any more shrinkage after curing let's get started on that so after UV curing this is what I'm left with I have the knotted torus which I believe actually printed a whole lot better I think curved surfaces with this resin print phenomenal and this printer prints them great I think that's why I like this printer when I'm using it for jewelry prints you can see the detail there and I'll put up some photos where you can get a better look at the detail I, I'm just really happy with with the way that this prints especially this resin with curved lines here on my block after curing you can still you can see I still have the lines there's nothing you can do about that I could probably finish it with some sandpaper but let's just measure it up and see if I ended up with any shrinkage after curing and here again we've got about 20 millimeters it did shrink got like 0 0.1 0.01 millimeters a little bit on each side but really so insignificant that I'm pretty happy with it again I think this is a result of this resin just being what it is and like I said flat surfaces print really bad on it but I'm happy with everything else again that knot came out really good and I'm very happy with it so that's my firmware update and whether or not I'm getting any better results I don't think I'm getting much better results except for the curved surfaces which are printing much much better so I can't wait to print some jewelry with this and stay stay tuned because I'll be doing that in uh, the next week and or two so here's a closer look up at the uh, knotted torus that I printed and this printed really well I'm very happy with it you can see there's very very good detail in this and I'm getting very few resin lines even at 0 0.05 I could have dropped this down to 0 0.025 and seen what it did it would have taken a little longer to print but no big deal guys if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're not a subscriber considering subscribing and if you want to get a notification every time I upload a video no matter what the subject is hit that notification bell and whether I put up watches jewelry jewelry design or a 3D printing stuff, you'll get a notification. Thanks for watching again, guys. Take care and talk to you later. Thanks, guys, for taking the time to watch some of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see new stuff that I put out, usually on a weekly basis, hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell. I really appreciate any uh, sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with uh, my channel to grow. You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website, I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. Any little bit helps to keep this up and running. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care guys, happy watchmaking and jewelry making.